Well, good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. Another day bimbling on the French coastline. I don't really have a, a Scooby-Doo what the plan is this evening. Over the last number of weeks, I've done a little bit of research, not a huge amount, but I've kind of pinpointed some locations and at least been in the right ballpark. But tonight, we're right on one of the little western kind of tippy fingers. Rather beautiful. Um, in Brittany. And we hadn't kind of planned to come here. We were going to kind of be cutting straight down towards uh, Quimper. But we just thought, you know what? Let's carry on along the coastline. I spotted a little ur that in the summer season, which starts on the 1st of April, is paid for, but this time of year it's free. No services, but it has got a loo and a, and a bar and various bits and pieces. From a photography point of view, ain't too sure. Now I know we are looking at Google Maps, it looks like there is some beautiful coastline down there, but getting to it with lots of wire which by the way on a previous vlog you probably heard me talking about slicing off my my shins yeah i i didn't see the wire and i completely you know almost came up cropper trying to find oh hang on he says aha no idea but it's getting me closer to the sea and i guess that's what we're aiming for so i'll put you away and we'll see where this path leads me. So, a couple of issues. How are we seem to talk about issues? Come on, Nigel, we're positive, hey? So, something that has followed me pretty much the whole journey here. You've heard me talking about a number of times the coastline we're still pretty early in the season and so there's not a huge amount of um, heather or honeysuckle and so you just end up with kind of a big sort of dead area um, and the other issue for me and this is just from a personal taste perspective and again it's something that i've spoken about i kind of get a little bit shooting sort of at the coastline where you're either shooting sort of predominantly the cliffs on left or cliffs on right and then you have a big sort of wide open space. It's one of the reasons why I quite liked Pen Her because not only had you a little bit of bowl action in the bottom of the frame but there was those little islands out on the horizon as well um, and so that's potentially a bit of an issue but here um, there, there might be a shot to be had because we do have some interest especially a little square cup crop because we've got a couple of layers of rocks. Now I'm not going to shoot here right now I'm going to carry on walking on and that's another potential issue. It might even sort of give you an example of what I'm talking about if I just walk on just a little bit further. Shadows. So the sun itself, the peninsula where we're on, um, even though we're kind of out to the west, there is a big sort of clump of rock that probably in about another 45 minutes or so, a lot of this coastline is going to fall, I think, into, into shadow. Now, we're staying here this evening, so it might be something that I can come back out again and maybe shoot at first light tomorrow. But what I wanted to do was just see whether I can get over this little nubbin of a hill and see whether there's anything to be had over here. Because I think once I get over this little, this little bump, oh, I should have the sun right till sunset. And as we had before in the last couple of shoots, not a huge amount of clouds about as well. But hey, enough complaining, Nigel. Look where you are. All right, let's mosey on. Come over that nubbin, as I said. We're still faced with Try not to get too much of that bright sun. Still faced with a lot of the, the sort of dead debris in the foreground, but maybe if I kind of, there's no fence here. 
Maybe if I was to sort of make my way down a little bit, try not to fall off the edge. We now have some interest, not only on the sort of right hand side of the frame, but there's actually a little lighthouse out there as, as well. And in fact, it looks like I could probably at a, at a push, make my way down here as well. <laughs> Certainly would be at a push. But that's potentially more like it, and the sun's going to kind of drop down and illuminate, sort of cast its lovely light kind of into the into the, into the rocks. Now, again, no clouds in the sky, so either trying to be foreground heavy, or maybe a sixteen by nine or a a more panoramic type crop. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on walking. It's still about an hour and forty-five minutes before sunset. But this, this potentially could be somewhere to, to look at and get set up maybe half an hour or so before sunset. So, but we'll, we'll wander on. Okay, things are getting a little bit more interesting. So some lovely rock textures and lovely kind of cracks and crevices in the rocks that potentially could pull your eye through the image. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop calling them issues because they're really not issues. Challenges, we'll call them challenges. I obviously don't have an L bracket for the GFX and a, a scene like this probably suits itself more to a portrait orientation and I can't really do portrait. The closest I could get to would be a kind of a square format. But again, looking out towards that lighthouse as that sun starts to dip down, still quite harsh, but that sun starts to dip down, there is potential and even potential up here looking the other way, as, uh, other way as well. So you've got maybe two birds with, with one stone. But we're going to carry on walking on up here. Now I'm sure that this is going to be a... Oh, lordy be. I'm sure this is going to be one of the def defense, defense locations that they don't let you take photographs in and around. I think as long as you're not pointing your camera at the, the Frenchman with the gun, I think you're okay. But... Oh, and the little bonus I just saw as well, there's actually a quicker way back to the car park rather than walking around the coastal path. So if I do end up shooting out here till sunset, it's a relatively quick route back and on oh, pretty stable ground as well, which might bode well for a run tomorrow. Right, let's go to the point. And I think some of that, as that light gets softer, will really show up well on the sides of some of those rocks. The issue I'm finding, oh, I said I wasn't going to, the challenge I'm finding is just balancing the, the sort of foreground with interest all the way through the frame. And I think that is partly to do with the fact that I don't have that portrait orientation. But that could be, be an option. Now, the issue... Oh, the challenge with shooting there is if I then want to turn my attention and shoot out towards the lighthouse, I don't have a long enough focal length. So even at 64 mil, I would still then need to crop in. And I would prefer this evening not to be running about like a blue arse fly. I get the feeling that one or two images is going to be more than enough. So ideally, I would like to find a location that I can maybe come up with it two three at most compositions and not move too much but yeah it's really beautiful really beautiful area oh, and that light i can just sense it's starting starting to soften just a little bit we're about an hour and a half away from sunset and it's just starting to soften so we might even get fortunate and be able to make an image in the not too distant future so made my way down to what i shall affectionately call the dark side of the moon um, big sort of uh, bank of, of wall sort of blocking the, the sun at the moment. And also I had to kind of clamber down a pretty sort of boulder strewn mayhem. Now I was up top and I was actually shooting the little, I, I saw this little sort of outcrop of rock that you can just sort of see here. And I thought, oh, that certainly looks like an image for me. But on the lens I have for the GFX 32 to 64, just, just too, too short. Thankfully, I was able to pick my way down through the boulder field 
and um, then it was just a case of lining something up with a square crop, focus on the rock and just shot two or three images. Now what I liked about it was not only was there some nice wave action below the rock but there was also a little um, probably a riptide or something or a little sort of sliver of wave making its way out sort of onto the far horizon as well which I think sort of balanced sort of the rock so first image of the evening in the bag and I shall throw it up and we shall well I guess we're gonna have to get back up here again it's about 45 minutes now before sunset um, so this may be only a two image shoot but we're gonna get up over this uh, boulder face um, get back onto the light side of the moon and hopefully find some light for a composition for sunset. Oh, right, we are only about 20 minutes away from sunset and this is not my final composition. I was looking to maybe get a second image of the evening, but I think it's just going to be far too rushed. I did go ahead and, and shoot an image here, but I don't think it's, it's much, much good. So I'm actually going to now start focusing on towards the lighthouse, um, towards the setting sun. A little bit bright at the moment still, but I'm going to try to nail in the composition and then see what we can come up with. Um, I just don't have enough time to be shooting with the sun. Um, and I, it's nice, but again, I, I'm struggling with that whole not a lot on the on the right hand side of the of the frame. So I'll put the image up anyway, but let's move on to see whether we can get one final image with the sun. Right, so I think I have a, a potential composition or composition for my final image. I'm kind of shooting into the sun and of course that's giving me lens flare so I'm having to kind of compensate for that by making a duplicate set of frames with the old kind of thumb in front of the sun. Now that sun goes down pretty quickly. Um, we're about 10 minutes away from sunset and as has been the case for the last week or so as the sun's getting closer to the horizon, we, we seem to be losing some of that richness. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm kind of not liking as much is there's a lot of kind of white foam down in the, on the waves. It's, it's quite messy when you do a slightly longer exposure. Um, I've only got a three stop on here, but I'm still getting a one and a half, two second exposure, and it's making the bottom left-hand side of the frame quite sort of white. Um, what I liked about it was the, the sort of the bowl of the, of the rocks leading out to the lighthouse are actually being sort of slightly illuminated by that setting sun. I still think shooting that way may have been preferential, but I just couldn't find a, a composition. So we're going to stick with this. Now, I was originally going to go for a panoramic type shot, um, and then I looked at a four by three. I think I've settled on a 16 by nine. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that. But I think that's what I'm going to end up looking to do uh, first and foremost, the 16 by 9 Just bringing that sun um, into the frame, bottom left hand corner leading through and hopefully enough of the light illuminating those fantastic jagged rocks. And of course, out then sort of on the sort of far, not far horizon, but the furthest part of the front. You know what I mean, I kind of three quarters of the way through the frame. Oh, getting hungry. There's a, a lighthouse, a little point of interest. There's actually another lighthouse way on the horizon. That's what was confusing me. That's my excuse anyway. Um, but I'm not sure that's going to be overly visible in the frame. And of course, as soon as that sun sets, we're not going to get any light in the, or any sort of texture in the sky. So I think that'll be game over. So what a stunning location though. What a stunning location. Right, I'll put this image up and then I'll, I'll get back to you once the sun goes down. Right, well, that is the sun just dipping down. 
behind the horizon. And of course, one of the, the benefits of, I guess, of not having a huge amount of, or any texture in the sky, is once that sun starts to slip below the horizon, you can pretty much say it's, it's game over for the evening. So, packed away. And now, oh, the pretty arduous climb back out of there and back to the van. Oh, let's get a bit of light in the subject, that's a bit better. But yeah, beautiful area, once again. This Brittany coastline is just absolutely stunning. It's phenomenal. And a, a little hidden gem. If you're ever in France and you fancy a bit of coastal photography, pick a spot on the Brittany coastline and you can't go far wrong. Well, I ended up shooting a couple of different compositions. As I say, lens flare was a bit of an issue, so I had to keep kind of dipping the old thumb in. A few different compositions and a few different aspect ratios. And then from there, I'll, I'll see what we can come up with. So I'll either put one, maybe two images up here at the end. But yeah, another, another nice evening out with the camera. Right, it's about a half an hour walk back to the van. Temperature has dropped quite a lot. I'm in shorts, as I have been for the last two or three weeks. Beautiful. Right, guys, well, once again, thanks a lot for following along. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.